Oh, big brother things. Oh. Welcome everybody to, I think it's our fourth artist talks at Cold Gallery. And we've got, um, as part of the exhibition, um, Andrew Sales and Joshua Van Leder talking about their, their work. Um, surrounded by it. Yeah, um, and so, to do an introduction of our two beautiful artists. Thank you. Um, do you want to go first? I'll oh, reintroduce ourselves. Or? Well, no, no I'll, 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 I'll read from the programme. Um, so, uh, Andrew um, studied at the Loughborough University, and then it's uh, two or three years ago you finished your MA at... Um, 2019, I think I graduated from Leeds. Leeds, Leeds. Yeah. Um, and you're a figurative painter. Um, Trying to. Yeah, and uh, Joshua Leader, who, who is a uh, artist, designer, author, jack of all trades. Um, uh, and you studied at um, San Francisco yeah. uh, Academy of Art, University of San Francisco. That's correct. Uh, that was fashion. Fashion, yeah, major yeah. in fashion, minor in contemporary art. Uh, yeah, yeah ah, fantastic. And um, yeah, so I guess it was the uh, the energy and depth of the two the two guys' work that I thought would make such a nice combination. You know, there's so much. I mean, they're quite di quite disparate in, in style. You know, figurative and then and then, and then abstract shapes. But there's, there's 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 lots to mesh together. I don't think we can talk about some of those things and, uh, and individually what you. Guys, work is about. So I don't know. I, I just have some questions that interested me about the stuff. But feel free to go off on a tangent about talking about your, your work in general, or yeah. if anybody wants to um, ask any questions, we can, we can just put your hand up or shout out. That's okay, with you guys. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so I, I, I guess I, I thought I'm always interested in in art, the idea of um, beauty or what's aesthetically pleasing. So I, so I wanted to, I wanted to where, does, where does beauty sit in what, in what you do, what you make? Because I feel like that, you know, there's, yeah, that's a, it's an interesting point to I me, mean, because the aesthetically pleasing works beautiful in a sort of sense, but also the like there's more to it. Well, I think it's it's hard to it's hard to define what beauty is. So the you know that old phrase, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But I suppose beauty, the word itself, in in terms of contemporary art, is quite a sort of scary thing to say. If you say something's beautiful, you maybe a, a sort of saying that you just like it for what it is, and maybe it isn't that, and it's all sort of subjective. But I think my idea of beauty is something that you're sort of attracted to and aesthetically. Uh, so that doesn't necessarily mean the colours or the form, it obviously does as well, but sort of the ideas behind things as well and why they're made can be quite beautiful. So say for example if you look at outsider art and stuff like that, uh, art that's just made for the artists themselves and never exhibited, that they've never been trained or anything. Uh, I think that's quite a beautiful thing for an artist to sort of make something that is just for themselves and it's a sort of, it's their own expression of themselves but in the sort of normal ideas of what beauty is it sort of isn't that so it's, it's very subjective I think but in terms of my work I think I just like bright colours and sort of funny shapes and beautiful women and pictures and, and sort of golden things and stuff for example with that over there and stuff uh, but I think the sort of the, the, the connotation or the the meaning behind stuff can also be quite sort of spiritual or be beautiful, but like I say, in in, our, in modern art, it's quite hard to uh, it, it's quite sort of it's quite sort of passive thing to say that, but uh, yeah, it's a tricky it's a tricky thing really. Um, but my point is that it doesn't necessarily have to be the sort of aesthetic look of something or the colours. It can be sort of why it's made or the art who the artist is. That's quite beautiful. Yeah, definitely. For me. I, I was in a very dark time, a very difficult time period of my life, so creating the beautiful works, I, I would like to think they, they are beautiful, um, that's, that's why I did it. Um, colour is obviously very, very important to me, 
Uh, we'll get on to inspiration and stuff, I'm sure, further down the line. But for me, um, nature is a massive enigma for me. Hugely uh, get a lot of inspiration from it. Um, started off as a healing process for me, painting the sea, being around the sea. And it kind of, it was very authentic and genuine. It just kind of evolved into, into what it is, is now, really. But in that sense, it's quite a sort of yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of the, what's uh, called when you sort of go through some, some sort of trauma and yeah. use art to sort of mix up. You know? Yeah, exactly. Maybe it's a bit too cliche, I don't know. No, I don't think, I think it's cliche because it's true, because a lot of people yeah, probably, use yeah. it in that different yeah. way. Yeah. So, so I guess in, in setting out to make the pictures, I, I get conscious of an idea of a, maybe not a subjective beauty like you were talking about, like people um, just making it for themselves and like that, but an idea that, um, that, that you're sharing kind of this positivity. Or, yes, or that's you, the main aim. Or you're sharing the aesthetic, me, yeah. so you, you're going to make something that, that um, you know, perhaps other people think, oh, well, that's, that, that's, that's beautiful, that, that creates a, a similar... Visually uh, powerful. Sometimes, um, for me, I, I, I'll create um, a couple of pieces and maybe I won't find it beautiful, but the inspiration from what I pulled it from is beautiful to me, so it's kind of a, a, a different different people interpret things differently. I've done that so, loads of times. Like I've done a painting where I've sort of struggled with it, and I thought, this is the ugliest. Yeah. I'm just going to swear, but this is one of the ugliest uh, paintings I've ever done, then someone, someone will buy it, or someone will sort of think, think that they really like it, and it's yeah. like, oh. So you see it in a different way. I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. Uh, it's being sat in a gallery or, or, or being around galleries or, or going around galleries seeing artwork. It's something you, um, you, you ask that question of somebody else. That you say, well, what do you think of that? Or if something looks really beautiful, you want, you say, oh, what, what, do, you, what do you think of this? Isn't that beautiful? And you want some. So the other bird sort of share it, it's a collective thing, it's like a, um, a, a judgment together, isn't it? Um, I think people's idea of beauty is built up by who they are, their environment, and who they're sort of with, mm. if that makes sense. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's certain sort of tribes and stuff in, <clears throat> in the far flung corners of the world where sort of women who are overweight <laughs> And have eaten a lot of food. That's yes, it. Very true. Are perceived as very beautiful, whereas in the West, it's it's, it's more sort of slimmed down, and it's yeah. pushed obviously by magazines and, and media. Mm -hmm. That's all the slim body and stuff is more beautiful. But that's just uh, that's just the culture, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, that's defining people's idea of what beauty is. So, so would you say you're exploring more or more of a kind of um, uh, subjective beauty or more of an objective beauty? You, you, do you think you're a chap? Like, are you, are you channeling, um, you know, this this kind of collective idea, or you think, oh, this is this is, this is my this is my work. I'm wanted to make it beautiful. This is this is this is different. I'm more the latter. Like, I like to sort of be sort of pleased by my own work. <laughs> so it's obviously my subjective, objective view of beauty is what makes my work the way it is. I think. Yeah, and for me, there's a lot of chaos in my work. Um, yeah, in, in different pieces, there's there's chaos, there is chaos, and for me, in a bit, I, I, the reason I, I paint it like the way I do is because there is a lot of beauty that comes out of chaos and dark periods of time, and for me, I want people to know that and, and to understand that that if I can get through it, then then they also. It's can. like cathartism in a way, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I think Van Gogh said something similar about beauty in nature and it, nature being chaos. Yes, definitely. And he, he saw that nature so complex and so chaotic that he found the sort of beauty in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, moving on from, I guess, beauty. Also, um, what interested me about both your work is. Um, this is the, sort of the material, the materiality of, of, of how they're made. I mean, obviously, Joshua, your, your work um, is the main question. Yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the colour does a, the colour does a lot, but the, yeah, the, the material and the structure, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 really it's really a strong element. And, and then similarly with Andrew, there's a there's a, um, a kind of unique treatment of um, you know s small brush strokes and. and 
replaced, and, and there's, def there's, there's, a, there's a real preoccupation with how how um, the paint looks. Um, yes, I just, just what is what is the materiality of the of the painting? I think it's the, sort of the variation of oil paint. I think that that's why oil paint is the best sort of medium because you can use oil paint as a watercolor, and you can use oil paint as a in pasta, so you can make it really thick and academic painting is in the sense of what the old masters used to do. It's, a, it's an application of both, both of those things, so they use thick and things where they're needed. <clears throat> and I think that sort of expresses certain things. So, say you wanted to paint like a rocky formation in oil paint, you'd want to use it quite in pasto and quite thick, but then you can glaze thin watercolour type paint across the top of it to richen the colour. So, for me, the, ver the, sort of the variations on how you can use oil paint and make it thin, make it thick, put them both together, is what makes it the best medium for me. <clears throat> and as well, it's the same, it sort of seeps into colour as well, so you can say you want to make something green, you could just paint it green, but you could also paint it yellow and then glaze a sort of wash of blue over the top and that'll turn it green. But it's that sort of, that freedom to sort of do what you want with it in a way and, and sort of play things together to make new sort of textures and stuff. It's like with Josh's work, you use glazes as well. Like yes, I when do. I first saw it, I was like, you use glazes? How? Because yeah. <laughs> I'm used to just wiping it across some fairly lumpy-ish paint. I mean, most paintings in here are quite flat, but the way to build up depth for me is to layer and layer loads of different glazes on top of each other at the same time, or allow drying times and then put another sort of slightly stronger or, or weaker tint on top of it. I think you do something similar, don't you? I so you build do. up the structure, don't I you? I definitely do do something similar. But your works are very in-depth, I find. They're very, they're very <laughs> detailed and in-depth, and, and I feel like mine are a bit more surfaced. Oh, they're more, more, more textured. You, you see what you get, and that's kind of it. But with yeah. yours, they're kind of... But there is a collaboration in the sense they are both very otherworldly. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's interesting the, 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 um, the, the comparison because you've got, um, on the most part, actually, you know, you're creating an illusionary space, um, although, although the paint, the, you use texture quite a lot of the paint, um, you're creating like this illusionary space, especially stiletto painting, all these yeah. crystals and rocks, and then, and then um, and Josh, it's, it's almost, it's, the, the, the work is literally, is the, literally, the, literally the depth of itself, but then, but then you, you then you're using the paint as well to to add a, a tone and depth of colour. Yeah. So it's like um, it is the it is the thing itself and it's illusionary as well. Yes. Um, yes, it's illusionary. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope to a lot of people's eyes. To me, it is anyway. Especially the ones with met more metallic on. Um, even that the the one up here on the right. There was a lot of metallic actually used on on that one. But a lot of people ask me. The, the main question is how. I don't know if you get this, but I get how do I do it, or, or I, you know, what's my inspiration for it? And I um, don't know if I can say this on, on camera, but it's actually pigeon shit. <laughs> yeah, um, I was I in, exactly what you mean. <laughs> I was I was in London, and I, I remember walking under a, a, a bridge of, uh, seven years ago, and there was just this pile of you know the pigeons sitting under the bridge, and there was just piles and lead, and it was right up to here about a foot or two foot of, of just pigeon shit that just built up over time and I thought <laughs> and I know it's weird saying that because now hopefully you look at it and you don't see that but um, <laughs> hopefully but it, it, that's that is one one of the reasons I already had this idea and I was I was building these uh, this formula and then I thought oh, it would actually be really cool to have it come off the canvas and kind of lay it and lay it and lay it and lay it because I experimented throughout all my works um, to get to where I've got to, it's all, and even in fashion, it's always been about experimentation, and uh, that's how I, you know, I, I remember painting over and over um, on like con with with concrete and ca canvas, and then I get to the end of the painting and it would crack and it would all fall off, um, and I'd be effing this and effing that, and you know, so stressed out. So I'm really proud of how they are now, where they, you know, you can touch them. And you know they 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 hold their own. They hold and they the gel to the canvas. And I think I think they work really well um, on canvas. 
I haven't tried it on aluminium or board yet, um, but on, on canvas I think for now that they work really well. So um, the material is really, 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 really important to me because I think it's unique, right? So you know, know, know what's like, going to happen in the materials as well, like you yeah, said, with yeah. the concrete it was like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes the, the unknown as well. I was, there's a quote, I can't remember who it was, uh, rather than being feared of the unknown, we should be curious of it. And that's exactly my, my aspects into everything I do. And, and the, the, it works with your, 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 it works with a, a good metaphor, doesn't it? You, I mean, from, from the uh, pigeon shit, sort of negative, <laughs> you've created the positive, which is, which is the yeah. work. And, and, and you, literally you, always and this is, in this my is, life, that's literally it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, 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 uh, the material is the... Is the yeah, is the oh, it's, it's, it's massive. Because I, I think if I just painted like that, I wouldn't... I wouldn't be very un well. I, I'd like to think I'm quite a unique artist because I don't think I know only one other artist that um, he doesn't actually paint. He uses paraffin wax. Dylan Gabriel Richards is called an American yeah. guy. He's a really cool guy, uh, interesting artist. But I don't really know anyone else that can that knows how to do this and make it art and work. Yeah. So, so on the same sort of theme of the material, how it's made. Um, what? What? Because I'm a, I'm a, like a gestural painter, what you often yeah. see with paintings is you, you, you see paintings that, that are self-consciously painted, you can see the brush lines, you can see the, 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 their paintings. And interestingly, with both of you, the, the, there is not that, um, it's almost like a cliche of the mark. The gesture, um, yeah, the, yeah. the male gesture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think of brought Rory the audience <laughs> <or, laughs> which, is, which is again separate from, from that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I, I, I do, you're painting it in such a way where, it, where it's intricate marks, it's not, it's not it's, it's, it's quite wide strokes, and Josh was saying, um, it's, it's, it's the structure and, the, and then the paint on top. So, it, it, is that, how much has that grown sort of consciously? You thought, I'm going to make work that isn't, you know, dealing with this kind of, um, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a complex thing, isn't it? Because everybody's been, you know, the whole of the 20th century, everything's like, yeah, 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 yeah. painting, you know. Um, is that conscious thing, or is it just a natural, you know, natural thing you've come across? Is this is how you feel? I always try to use what works for the painting itself. So depending on the subject matter or, or the themes or even the concept, if you pull them all together, you want to use the best sort of technique to emphasise that. So if, if you want to do something that. Uh, is about texture and has a sort of element of texture to it. I mean, my idea of thinking would be to paint it thickly and then maybe glaze on top of it. Mm. But yeah, so it depends on the subject matter that sort of dictates what ha what sort of fluidity the paint is set at. For me, it's always about how how much uh, how much of the texture I, I put on because I'm only I'm, I'm quite limited to yeah. how gestural I can be with the brush max. But it's always at the end. I always plan the paintings. Uh, at the beginning, but it, they, they never turn out how no, exactly how I want them to. But then I'm finished. Then I, is it, yeah, they never do. And then when I'm yeah, finished with it, and then I just know, I step back, I go away for a while, and then I and then I go back into the studio, and then I'll be, I'll just know. Were you um, were you looking for something unique, something you've not seen before? No, I'm talking to you and a fashion background. Yeah, were you, yeah. Were you looking to make something that yeah that would operated in that way, like this, oh this is new, this does not seem to be make something like this or use this material or because I, I, I don't know if that's um, yes that's no definitely and I, I, if you actually look on on my uh, my fashion portfolio or fashion on, on Instagram the clothes are kind of not they're not ordinary they're not they're not your basic kind of clothes it's patchwork or I'll manipulate print with felting or or embroider and and, and when I set out, uh, it was it was never it was never meant to go this far. It was just experimentation and a bit of healing. And then I was so passionate um, and authentic with it. It just it just developed into where I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this seriously now and move away from fashion because I have this new create this new medium, which is a bit, is that a bit egotistical. To say. We're only I've all created, all the yeah, I, 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 I did. I created it, and I was well. I, I was so, I was so proud of it that it was enough for me to. I'm slowly getting back into fashion, but it was enough for me to 
someone's like finding, a new, it's like finding a new medium and once you've done your sort of however yeah. many hundred hours of it, you can sort of express yourself. Then, then it, yeah, once you've kind of perfected it, um, that work, that really hard work ethic, really passionate about it, once you've perfected it, um, then you can kind of have a bit more fun with it, right? Yeah, right? yeah. Um, it, you know, Things go wrong less. Like yes, less oh, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah and I, I, these are obviously a lot smaller than, than my ginormous pieces. <clears throat> um, not taking anything away from these, but w when I first started out, they were all this kind of size. Um, and then when I started going bigger, I felt like I was losing the quality and the depth and, and it, was, it wasn't holding to the canvas the way I wanted to. So then I had to step back and then work on, on these, this kind of size again. Didn't hold to the canvas because they were bigger? Yeah, you know, I, I, what I was it's doing, like because, because when, I, when I create, um, I make it in this massive pot and then I have to, before it all solidifies, mm. it becomes rock hard. Right. I have to apply it onto the canvas. So I was rushing. That, that process, and you can't rush this at all. And I was rushing it, and then I wasn't applying the right um, gesso to to make it stick and hold. So, yeah, I was rushing it, r rushing the process, um, just thinking too much about the end result rather than just in, enjoying that process. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, I guess so, um, you know, my next question is kind of an example of that is how, I mean, and thinking about where the work comes from and, and the idea of it being a new process and unique, um, and, and, and I guess similar to our work, um, yours, Andrew, it seems like steeped in our history. Um, so it's yeah. of, I wondered, um, yeah, where, 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 where you both see yourselves in relation to the, uh, the huge weight and canon of, of uh, making work after everybody else has done. The thing is, I find it a bit depressing sometimes when I go to certain galleries and see. Uh, amazing sort of art history works because I'm just like, oh Jesus, it's just so good. But, <clears throat> you know, if you look at, if you look at say, you know, probably the most famous artist in the world, Picasso, uh, he totally pillaged Western art when he, just, when he started inventing his uh, sort of tribal masks and uh, he basically invented cubism and abstract expressionism yeah. you know, early on in his life. So I don't think there's anything wrong with taking stuff from art history because there's just so much of it there. Uh, I think sort of, you know, I think that I'm, I'm very interested in art forgers who are people who sort of fake artwork and then sell them on the market for loads of money because <laughs> partly it's, it's quite funny because it sort of takes on the art establishment but <laughs> it also sort of shows that uh, art history is there as a tool really. It's not really there to make you feel bad about your own yeah, work. No. It's there to sort of inform your own work. So I always sort of, I'm. I'm always trying to go to galleries and stuff just to look at new work and I get obsessed with certain arts for like about six months at a time and then I'll move on to the next one. Uh, but it always sort of informs your work, I think. So, I mean, with a lot of the ones here, there's a lot of uh, pre-Raphaelite sort of Pullman Hunt, mm -hmm. J.W. Waterhouse and a lot of Richard Dad stuff, especially Echo Chamber over there, which is not copied from a Richard Dad, but the, the whole sort of uh, tondo Taken from it. composition, yeah. yeah. Appropriated, yeah, so that's yeah, what I like to say, because yeah. it sounds better than Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> Standing on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Cersei, yeah. I, 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 I know lots of artists that could well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't sit and read Homer's Odyssey or anything. I don't sit in my house and read Homer's Odyssey. She's a character from that, but I was at uh, Birmingham Art Gallery with my mother about a year ago, or two years ago, might be longer. And Birmingham Art Gallery's got one of the best pre Raphaelite uh, sort of rooms in the, in the whole of the UK. And there's quite a lot of versions of Zersi that I've sort of taken from, so I didn't discover her character from reading. <laughs> Honestly, I'll sort of do it from, the, from the paintings. <laughs> yeah, from the paintings. It was, it was this idea of, of this sort of these lone figures and say she's quite a conflicted woman, and I thought I'd be quite good to sort of use it in that sense. But I didn't discover it through sort of the literature, it was more through the history of but, the painting. I mean, yeah, it's interesting that the, the, these, these reoccurring um, subjects, figures, and so you join a dialogue. You've got, I think that's what I was looking at. Cersei, you've got, you've got Romans have depicted it, you've got, you've got 19th century. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a whole. Uh, it's just sort of an archetypal character, in a way. Yeah, yeah. 
completely. And it's the same with sort of uh, mythological art and stuff. You know, a lot of stuff's been sort of redone and redone over again. And I think it's quite interesting to sort of do it in, in this sort of day and age to, to visit back to these sort of ideas and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it just helps. It, it helps inform uh, how to sort of uh, apply the right techniques to make to make the paintings itself. You look at you look at a painting of Zeus by Waterhouse or uh, by by someone else or whatever, and you uh, and you look at how they've done it, and then you can sort of pick and choose from what they've done. And sort of, it's almost like a composite in a way. You sort of yeah. picking different techniques and putting them together. But yeah, like I say, it's. Uh, it's more about it's more sort of seeing the paintings themselves than actually reading the literature. Although I have sort of had a brief look at it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, 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 uh, that'll be what it's. I mean, over to that's what's drawn everybody to to. Yeah, I think. See, you know, look, you've got to realise that uh, a lot of historic painting, especially Renaissance painting, and that that was the height of technology for them. They didn't even have collapsible paint tubes back then. They had to grind their own their own paint, and that was the height of technology. I was having a conversation with with my girlfriend the other day about this. And I said to her, I was like, if Michelangelo was alive now, or Raphael was alive now, he wouldn't be painting scenes. He'd be working for Pixar, or he'd be like making Hollywood CGI films, because that is the height of technology now. Talking, but back then it was... Are you talking as out of purpose as painting? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think we're in a different time now, but the reason that I like art history is so much is because that it was it was so so it was a lot higher on the spectrum than I think it is now. And we'd be mad to not acknowledge the fact that, it, that, that, it, that we have you have to refer to the to to it as, a, as it itself, not as it not as it was, it, like that it, 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 it was this sort of um, cutting edge. Um, yeah, I think it, you can you walk in a fine line because you don't want to be too referential to art history because it alienates a lot of your audience. So, because if they're like, oh, I don't know where this has sort of been inspired from, it can be quite alienating. But you can make stuff that's similar or sort of appropriate from artists. Yeah, like, like, make like, it its new thing. Like Josh's work, I mean, you could, you could say, you know, all this, you know, similarities to abstract expressionism, Pollock, and, and, uh, 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 yeah. but, but, but it's not, um, you know, it's not direct, is it? It's not, um, yeah, I, I don't really, I mean, I, I, I do respect art history, and I, I, you know, the, the, the great, you know, Van you Gogh. Know, you know, so I think they're amazing. I don't really take uh, anything from that. I like to look at um, the Kooning uh, and, and that's the great artist of the past, Joe Mitchell. I think her work's brilliant. Um, and I admire it. And I take more like Picasso's work ethic. Like oh, his yeah. schedule was yeah. just. I, think I slept, really admire that. He slept so for about four hours a night, I think. Yeah. He worked. And he slept for another two hours. Yeah. So I, so I admire that. I love, I love that about him. And um, I think that's great. But yeah, I never really take. Just all my inspiration really just comes from, from nature really. It never yeah. comes from like, other artists. So. Well I mean I think it's it's I don't think it's necessary, but you if you look at certain art history it's quite interesting to uh, to see how how certain modernist ideas have been sort of forwarded by certain artists. So like Van Gogh invented abstract he invented that especially yeah, yeah, without yeah. sort of realising yeah. it. And uh, it's quite interesting to sort of see how, how the sort of discourse of art history, it's like sort of a hundred year series of Chinese whispers yeah, just going yeah, on yeah, and yeah, on yeah. and on, and here we are now. Yeah, it, you know, yeah. So, it's so um, I guess um, we talk about the environment, that's my, that's my, um, that's my next question. Um, I know, um, Joshua, your work uh, is yeah, almost completely informed by nature and environment, and, yeah. and, 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 and also your, your own, um, Yourself, uh, but then, but then uh, I know, I know it's, it, it's been important to some, of, to some of your work as well, Andrew. So, yeah, how how our, our relationship with nature and the environment and the natural world, um, yeah, how uh, um, well, even chair, uh, yeah, how 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 that um, how that has uh, informed the work, where where, where the, what? the ever changing natural world. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. what I mean. I know you refer, you refer to coral and, and there were. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's how I'd describe yours. And, 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 and in the environment. It's just some of your paintings. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, nature and. and, 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 and I, an idea of the. I guess the bigger picture. Uh, of the natural world. Yeah, yeah. Or a sense of us as, um, you know, tiny white 
specks in the blue thing. Yeah, the whole cosmic position of the man in the world and stuff has yeah. been a sort of theme that's been around for quite a while, but I quite like that idea. It's the, the Miraclade, which uh, is a lot about sort of ancient time and about how old the Earth actually is. Uh, if you look at sort of, there's this theory called deep time, which is about uh, the sort of billions and billions of years that the Earth has been sort of around for. And it's a sort of, it's a length of time that we as people who live for uh, 60, 70 years can't sort of com comprehend. So I got very into that, that whole painting is basically about that. Um, but in terms of the natural world for me, it's uh, obviously, like I said, art history is a big, a big sort of influence on me. But with Echo Chamber, the main impetus to, to make that work was I was just walking down a local canal. <laughs> Uh, near where I live, and there was like an arch of a bridge, and there was no wind, and there, it was during that time of the year where all the trees are sort of blossoming and all the petals are coming up sort of late summer, going in the water, and the water was really still, and as I looked at the bridge, there was like a perfect reflection of the bridge underneath, like a circle, and then there was like this layer of, of sort of plant matter and leaves and stuff on the canal, and that was it, and then I was like, bang, get a bit of Richard Dad in there, yeah. and boom, <laughs> there you go, you got a bit. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not it's going out in nature and sort of see, seeing stuff that you experience on on like an everyday basis is 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 part of it as well. And I, and I guess there's an allusion to um, the, the 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 title and, and the concept alludes to to other things, you know. Uh, the, echo chamber, it has lots of the connotations. Yeah, the well, experience. while I was doing it, there was an idea, I wanted to sort of, uh, as pretentious as it sounds, I wanted it to be a little bit about sort of time and how we sort of perceive time, hence the sort of dragonflies around the side. Because I only found out that dragonflies only live for like one day. Yeah. So they spawn and then they mate and then they die and they last for like one day. I think my twin brother at the back, we were talking about this. Do you know sleep, right? Yeah, no, their perception of time is one day, but to them, because they're so small, it is, it's longer than it is for us, because we're larger being. Yeah. The bigger you are, the, the sort of longer time is, or whatever. Yeah. So there was an idea of the, of the, uh, of the arch as sort of, of sort of, uh, of sort of representing different sort of uh, experiences of time, but I sort of tried to do that, and then I kind of overcrowded it with like putting dinosaurs in the back and like dragons and shit, and I was like, this isn't working. <laughs> so I sort of abandoned that idea. But it is sort of there as a bit of a sort of fossil record in a sense, and the whole like the whole pixies and stuff, and and, and flowers and blossoming flowers are very sort of temperamental and only there for a few days. So there's sort of that theme. Fleeting. So, yeah, like sort of the fleeting next year. Fleeting, fleeting beauty. Beauty of the short lived tyranny. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> me? well, mine's very literal, isn't it? I mean, yeah. uh, this one here to up here was uh, actually one of my new body of works that um, I'm bringing out. It's um, it's all inspired by natural catastrophes, uh, but hopefully, you know, there is beauty in that as well. You know, nature is just such a powerful enigma. Uh, I know I sound like a broken record, but it, it's all inspired <laughs> by 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 nature and, and the ever changing natural world. And uh, we need to respect it um, um, and cherish it and love it's it. Like so it's like sort of environmental aspect. Of yeah, massively. And that's. Uh, I don't want to jump a question. I don't know if you're going to ask us this at some point, but my new body of work, uh, I gathered up um, tons of uh, fishing rope from the coast uh, with local fishermen and I've cl cleaned them. I'm going to be putting that into my, my work, fishing, fishing ropes. And, Making sculptures and stuff out of it, it's going to be pretty mad. But then with the texture and stuff, so that's where I'm, that's where I'm going with it after this natural catastrophe. Yeah, I, natural I, catastrophe. Again, with Because I don't want to be too predict. I don't want to be too predictable. I don't want to just do corals. Yeah, you don't want to keep scapes. Scapes. Yeah, right. yeah um, I want to keep changing it up. I mean, with, with this one, it's all making think of the volcanic lava. Yes, and, and exactly. And again, like with the with the you know. It's, a, it's literal as well as metaphorical, because it, it's, it's sort of destruction and but, but you know new land and new things are being created from volcanic through through just dis, through through destruction mm -hmm. uh, the the things are re always reborn and the, there's real true beauty. It's like when Aborigines burn down big sections of the outback. Yes, to clear, to clear it. Stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, then the, the it's, it's, exactly, it's exactly that. that. Yeah, and a bit on a deeper kind of personal side. Um, 
being down and depressed and then kind of re, re, re you know rebirth of yourself can be a once you get through it is a very beautiful thing and you become stronger me personally I always thought when that when you put that on it I was like it's like uh, like volcanic yes it is it's inspired by um, the I can't remember the name of it now um, I somewhere in Iceland um, probably with lots of volcanoes yeah it erupted not long ago I can't remember the name of it, but that's what that was inspired by, uh, images from that. If you go to like Tenerife or the Canary Islands and stuff, they're all... Yeah, there's like, loads. There's all the rocks and stuff, yeah. that's all marching. Yeah, like, yeah, like that's that. exactly it. Yeah, yeah um, so I guess it's about, it's, you've kind of covered my, my, my next question, but it's, it's like, what, uh, what are things sort of beyond, um, beyond painting um, do you draw inspiration from? Because the environment and things like that. But, but yeah, yeah, poetry. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, poetry. A lot of mine are named after um, famous quotes by the men and women of our great past, or other, you know, uh, ex um, extracts from books, or inspiring quotes that when I was in hospital for a long amount of time, I read and I pulled, and I just kept it all, and then I, yeah, I just name each one after that rather than untitled. Or something like you know, titles are hard, I think. I find them really easy. That's true. Yes, <laughs> I've got loads. <laughs> Joshua, do, the, do, the, do, you, do you have an idea, um, like say, say a poem you've written or a quote, and then and then you make the, the picture, or do you do you, you make the picture and think, ah, this, these, these lines go with that? Yeah, so whilst I'm literally waiting for paint to dry, I'm always looking through um, poetry books or online, um, or Pinterest, I like to go back and say that, but Pinterest is a good one for the new card. Um, and I just, yeah, just build up, and then when I'm looking at the work and I've got music, music is obviously a massive inspiration, I'm sure, to, to everyone, but um, like I'll have classical music, and I'll be looking at that, and I'll be reading, and then um, and then I'll put in that. Sylvia Platt, Virginia Woolf, uh, Hemingway. Yeah, I did that live from San Francisco Symphony Hall. And then so you turn the cello yeah. into the, the, the girl. I turned the, the, the cello into um, the girl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've not seen that in ages, actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, 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 and Andrew, I guess, I guess co seriously, concept driven. You've got, you've got uh, a concept to begin with. And, and, and with yeah, so for me, uh, uh, like I said, the art history does have a big uh, sort of influence on me. but. Um, Certain sort of current social anxieties that I think we all have make their way into my work. So stiletto, the meaning behind that is really about uh, social media and the internet and how it's sort of changed our lives <laughs> in a way and how we sort of duplicate ourselves through social media. Mm. Uh, so I don't want to sort of think that I'm just sort of illustrating my negative thoughts or what I'm thinking about at certain times, but there are sort of outside aspects beyond and like you say, that do sort of inspire you and make you want to sort of, in a sort of cathartic way, express yourself. I'm trying to sort of explain this a little bit more, but um, before I made it, I wanted to make something that was a bit sort of gothic and a bit, a bit sort of scary looking. And I just came, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm painting, a lot of crime podcasts, as I'm sure we all do. Uh, and I he heard about this, uh, I listened to this documentary about uh, this woman called Tracy Seward, who used to live in, in, Man in Manchester. And uh, this is a real criminal case. I got the court documents and I read it all up and stuff because I was interested in it. But essentially what she did was uh, she was found guilty of murder in her husband. And when the police uh, sort of uh, went and investigated her, uh, they found out that she had a sort of ulterior personality called Stiletto on the internet. Where she engaged in this weird sort of there's no children here, this weird sort of fetish where people where women would wear stilettos and like crush like little invertebrates and spiders and animals and stuff. <laughs> really weird. But I was like, damn, this is gold dust. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was reading away. And uh, and I thought that is a really good example of someone who has invented their own sort of ulterior personality through social media. Like I said, I think we all do in a sense through Facebook and Instagram, but I thought that is a really concentrated example of it. 
And then after reading the transcripts of the of the cold case and stuff, all these other little details come out. So obviously he's just crushing the spiders and stuff. The, the moths and stuff are there because moths uh, obviously start as a love and then they, they change into a moth. So it's like a wee bird. So all the women across there are, are representing the same person. But you know they've got blonde hair, they've got brown hair, they've got their, you know they're black, they're white, they're whatever you want them to be, which is something that can happen on the internet. And then. With it being about the internet, I thought I need to find some sort of metaphor for the sort of crystalline, complex nature of the internet. I was like, I can't do like a sort of, I don't know, like a cloud or something, that would be a bit sort of shit. So uh, I thought, I thought sort of those sort of geodes and stones, because they grow very slowly over time and they're very complex, I thought that's quite a good idea. But then, while I was doing that, as I was reading the court transcripts, the way that she disposed of her husband's body was quite gruesome, but they chopped them up and then they sealed them in concrete. Great. So sealed these bits in concrete and then sunk them at the, in the bottom of a river. It's horrible. How did you get caught? Uh, well, it was through like a few informants and someone off the internet actually confessed and said there's all these weird rumours going about about this woman murdering her husband, this stiletto goddess. And she had like a massive following. It was really dark. But that's so what you've, put, you've put elements of the, like, the rib cage in the... Yeah, so that's why some of the geodes have like bones and skulls in them, because that's what she did. They weren't geodes, but she sealed them in concrete and then pushed them to the end of the river. <laughs> I think so. Sort of part and a big part of what I do is trying to make paintings that ha harmonise the subject matter with the way that they're painted, with also the concept behind them. So I couldn't put anything else there. If that makes sense, it had to be that because that made total sense to the, the concept of the. You've, you've also got something. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a Tom Waits quote about um, I like uh, beautiful melodies telling me terrible things. So you've got the, yeah. The, 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 uh, well, yeah. I like the idea of paintings being sort of prophetic, sort of like warnings and stuff about sort of current social ideas. It's that old quote, which is uh, paint, uh, art is to uh, comfort the disturbed and disturb the comforted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing about the internet is that it's very easy to get you look at it and you can tell this, the, the, these, these elements are uh, symbolic and no, so, many, so many people have come in and um, been trying to sort of figure it out themselves, you know, and make their own, um, make their own that uh, was, idea. That was part of the aim. I think uh, being ambiguous is one of the strongest things you can do when you're yeah. a painter. I think if you, keep, if you give people everything on a plate, it's a bit sort of boring, I think. If you make people guess about the symbolism and the metaphor, then it's sort of... Francis Bacon used it and so did Graham Sutherland. It's about the sort of tension of the unknown. And basically, uh, it being sort of, you know, like metaphors and symbols aren't necessarily quite clear to people when they see them. But I think that's the best thing about art. You know, you should look at things and sort of just rub your chin. And be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this about? And then if you find out about it and know what it's about, that's okay as well. But I think the tensions of things being ambiguous is also quite important for me. That's why I don't want to give too much away about how I do it. Yeah, the mystery of doing stuff. I think there's a quote by Francis Bacon, who's one of our favourite post-war painters, and he says that the job of the painter is just to deepen the mystery. Yeah, and if you look so at the, the world we live in now with, with pho photography and stuff, yeah. I feel like painters have got a couple of ways to go. I mean, you can go for the hyper-realism, or you can go for stuff that is the antithesis to photography. Mm -hmm. And painting kind of is, I think. Because yeah, photography, yeah. David Hockney says this quite a lot, you think you know photography as good as it is, and it? it's an art. It's an art form in its own, in its own sense. But it's an in, it's an instant snapshot of something. Yeah. Whereas painting is is a meditation over hours and hours and hours of a subject. Yeah. And you can make photographs that kind of look like paintings, but not really. But you can yeah. make paintings that look like photographs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. It's a very good way to put it, actually. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, it's my last question. Um, where, I mean, I think Josh has covered it a bit, but, uh, but um, well, yeah, what, what's the next project? I mean, you've got some other projects as well to talk about, I guess. Um, yeah, what, 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 um, yeah what, what's next? What's, um, yeah, what, do you, what do you plan to do next? Painting or show? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm definitely I'm going to be working with the fishing ropes, um, like I said, um, and then I'm, I'm going to actually, after that, I know I'm going to continue to do the natural catastrophes, but I'm going to take a little step back um, from being a soul, just, just constantly being painting. I have a huge collection of different sizes and 
shapes of these 3D works. So I think I, I will put them into storage and just let them kind of sit there for a while. Um, and I'm going to be working, which is a bit completely different, but I'm going to be working with, um, we're going to be doing cubism. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. The, uh, so I'm going to be doing laser cutting, um, screen print and embroidery with that. These uh, stickers are Contemporary rugs. Yeah, there's some of the stickers. They're going to be in uh, contemporary rugs, um, stained <laughs> glass, laser cutting, like I say, what else is it? And ceramics, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be collaborating with different business, no, no, uh, different artists, and, and, and I will continue with the fishing ropes and continue to develop develop this and sure, sure. do triangles. I'm going to do a pyramid as well. Yeah. I'm going to make a, a, a big pyramid, yeah, a, a life size pyramid like with all this 3D. Not on the wall? No, it'll be a, a, it's going to be a sculpture with the 3D coming down the pyramid. Uh, yeah. I, I like your, uh, your different shape of characters, the hexagon. Yes, yes, I have a hexagon. I'm going to be doing um, three triangles. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but I'm going to be doing three, <laughs> three triangles. Um, I've got, I'm going to do an octagon. Oh, I've got an octagon. I want to do a pentagon. Just, yeah, just. It's quite nice being on different shapes, isn't it? Yeah, it's a massive. It's, it's a it's massive. A, I get a bit change with sort of the normal, the normal two by four canvas. I get a bit sort of like. Yeah, so it was really nice, the, the, the ones at the back there, the, 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 the small, smaller works. I was a bit nervous about painting like that because I got really comfortable about doing this size and this size and up. Um, so I was a bit nervous about going small again and then I was very nervous about starting um, this kind of, this kind of colours really because I got so used, I got the, the methodology of it was so, I got so almost a bit comfortable with it. Um, where it was just a bit, not easy, but you know, just doing, felt like it was kind of doing the same painting. Yeah, yeah. so it was really, it's been really, really great to do um, this new natural catastrophes. Um, and then working with the fishing boat will be, it will be very difficult, but nothing good is ever, nothing great is ever achieved by just taking these path visits. So I think it will be amazing. Exciting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think you've got to keep sort of challenging yourself with painting or trying to do different subjects. Yeah, like, you have to. Yeah. When I answering your question, like, for me, I've been doing all these sort of similar, well, I wouldn't say they were similar, but uh, things along this theme for quite a while. And since this exhibition, I've just uh, sat down and I've just done a picture of a dinosaur. Really? Yeah, I, I'm really into paleontology. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is really nerdy, this will never sell. But I needed a bit of a break from sort of making making the work that I was doing, so I'm just having a little sort of refresh. You're just doing it for myself. You never know where those moments like, are going to take you. Yeah. You, you might go for a dinosaur and then you might, I don't know, who knows? Head off yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah, you know, But I think you, you've got to sort of give yourself little breaks, I think, in between bodies of work. You know, and it's, it's quite nice yeah, to, yeah. Uh, it's quite nice to, just do some of these. I'm not going to exhibit. I'm just going to put them on the wall. I'm a big fan of dinosaurs too. So I know. Do you want to buy it? Yeah. So, so uh, I guess uh, that, that 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 could conclude my questions. If anybody has anything to ask or any um, any questions or um, wants to shout out anything, no. it's passion. Just raise your hand. I'll just shout, just shout it out. Hey, well, thanks so much for uh, coming. Thank you for coming, yeah. and I hope you all like the show. That's all I can say. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, and, uh, and also, um, I invited uh, uh, Gerald here, who's got these awesome uh, rings that he makes. Um, all right, yeah. Just to check out as well. Yeah. They're, they're damn cool. Um, yeah, excellent. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. For thank you. Thank you. Cheers.